Yeah, I thought you could see, so I'll just, um, I will do it. Actually, um, yeah, give me the house. So one of the things I observe, especially in competition, is that some of you guys uh, train very well in takedowns. Uh, Sand is very, very big on the takedown aspect of our game uh, in a competitive environment, and that's a good thing. If you take down, you get your two points, plus you're on top. And when you're on top, the philosophy is that you have better attacking options than the person at the bottom. Um, but one of the down drops, downsides to that is that the person doing the takedown will get caught in either close guard or half guard. So we've covered close guard um, before, very recently. So now we're going to cover half guard. And the half guard that is very common to get caught in is the one without the knee in front of you. There's two types of half guard. One is here, yeah, okay, it's a problem, but maybe I'll cover that in a second hour. But the main one I want to cover is here, round the back here. It's like the panic half guard. It's the one where they just grab their legs around your leg here, and if it's tight, it's a problem for you because you're kind of like, I can't my leg up. I can't even stand up. And you have to think about it not so much as my leg being trapped, it's my knee being trapped. My knee is connected to my hip, so that means my hip is trapped. And without movement, free movement of my hip, I can't progress upwards, sideways, up or down. Okay, so that's basically it. If he just trapped my ankle and I have freedom of movement of my knee, no problem, I can get it out. Right? So we're gonna practice actually view face that way. So we hopefully people can see. So here's the starting position. Your partner's just chilling here, right? and my knee is trapped between his legs. The ankles are locked in, all right? The first drill we're going to do, it's the most obvious one, we're gonna smash them. Okay, I know it sounds rude, but um, it's actually called the smash half guard. We're gonna, what we sma by smashing, we wanna basically make their shoulders uh, flex flat on the ground, but their knees are still pointing that way. Okay, it's the chiropractic stretch. And to get to that position, we need to find space underneath his arm. That's pretty much it, really our weight on their chest and our arm around the head like this. And I want to put my head on his shoulder here. If I'm kind of like this, quite nicely chatting, I mean I can just pretty easy revert back to the defensive posture, which is on his side. Okay? Just a recap of half guard. Good half guard player, especially when they're um, not using the knee, is actually they're quite contained within this area, very compact. And it's very hard to get this kind of position that we need. My ultimate aim is to get his back flat on the ground. We're, we're jumping ahead of ourselves, so we're going to assume that there's a bit of distance, and maybe he's framing against us here like this. We're going to reach in under here, find space under the armpit, shoot my arm all the way through that my body follows, we grab the head, we're going to squash. And we want to keep his back flat on the ground. My head, my jaw is on his shoulder. The next page is I'm going to raise my hips up, keep this tight there. I'm going to raise my hips up. I'm walking my knees up. And you notice how his knees follow along with me. As a side note, I'm also using my shoulder against his jaw, which is not very pleasant anymore. Now what I'm going to do is going to drop my, once my knee is free, I'm going to drop my knee to one side. He can keep it tight as, he, as much as he likes. But because his body is twisted, it's not a very strong hold. What we're going to do, make sure his back is still flat on the ground, is this one. Should be touching the top leg. Have I got it right? I can't see. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to push back. And as I push back, it should be this leg. Which means I'm then able to take this leg away. And then you have any position, feeling position of your choice. Maybe this one is a more obvious one to end up, which is the scarf hold here. So from this position here, I've managed to secure the underhook and the head and my weight is on his shoulder here. I'm, I'm raising my hips up, dropping my knee to that side. As soon as I've chosen to drop my knee to that side, I need to shift my weight here. And that's what I didn't show in the previous tip. So that's my fault and I'm sorry about that. I'm going to take this as far as I can. He's going to cling on. And I'm going to use this foot as the last resort to kick back. And that's why it didn't quite feel right when I was teaching it, but I just forgot about it. And you probably didn't feel right when you were doing it. So yeah. once again, we can drill a couple of reps of this before we move on to the second stage. I managed to get this. I've got here. I've got as far as here. I'm taking the leg to the other side, bringing my leg here. 
than we have. So keep that in your mind and rip it a couple of times. We're going to show you, move on to the next technique. And the next technique, I stay on that side. I don't move my head. So the best way to show it is probably, uh, let's do it so you're leaning out like this. And then so in this situation, I've managed to find, and we'll talk about when they can't, when you can't get this in the next stage. We managed to get this, and again, this the principle for this is to keep their back flat on the ground. I'm going to raise it as much as I can. I try to go this way, but it's not going. In, in fact, he shifts his hip the other way, and then that allows me to drop here. All right? I keep the pressure on his head and under arm here. And if you want, you can put your head on the ground. And I'm going to use this foot here, here. And we're just going to use this to help assist the leg. And guess where we are? Into that position, which is a superior position and point scoring. So we start here. Trapped. Trapped. I managed to get this. Flat in here. High, high, high. I tried to go that way. It's not quite happening. And we drop this one. I keep him flattened. Use this foot. And we try and get as high as we can to the high mount to our advantage. One more. This side. So we've managed to get the underhook, yeah, flatten him, oh, 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 oh. and through your knee, oh my god, that was not the knee, and him to that side. A little extra tip is sometimes you want to go like this as well, it just puts the stretch on a little bit more. Stretch him out here, and then we're already in high mount. So that's an early stage I've pushed up a bit more. But that's a small detail, maybe you don't need to worry about this stage. Anyone want to see that again, or well, you've got the idea? So it starts off with the first version, where we drop down into that side, but I want you to move your head to the other side. And then the version I just showed, we don't have to move our head to the other side. All right? We'll go for the, probably the easier of the two. The easier to do, not necessarily the most high percentage to complete, but it's worth showing you. Uh, it's one of Nick's favorite ones. I used to teach a lot, so uh, I feel one of to teach it as well. In this position here. I've got the half guard, I've got past the knee, but I can't get the underhook. Alright. I still have a way to flatten his back. Okay, you could use brute force, but that's generally not going to work. But the most pressing problem is I cannot get underneath here, which is my root. Okay. What I can do is I can switch my body here. So what we call is just reverse the scarf on basically. Uh, not the best position to show you. Uh, no, no, I think we'll be okay here. So he's still got his leg entwined around my leg. Still a half guard, having a stick. What I've done is switch my hips. And quickly, I'm, I'm just about here on his belt line. Not the best position to be in, but it's a start. In fact, we'll spin around so you can see what, what we're going to do underneath here. So here, we're trying to do that. I'm going to switch. My, my hip is on the ground. I'm not floating on here. Because all the parts I've to do is spin me that way and out, you know, am I in trouble? I'm on the ground. I'm basing myself solidly with my feet here. All right? This arm is crucial. It's your first thing you have to do. Is you have to get back here. All right? You cannot hang around here. He's quite strong. He's got frames, which is bracing it. You have to go underneath his arm so that his arm widens a bit. The next thing I have to do, and I'll turn around so you can see, is my bum. Complete that sentence. My bum moves. <laughs> so my bum moves backwards. So I'm sh advancing territory in the body. At the same time, I'm going to grab the knee. I'm going to pull it towards me. Again, you can't see it, but what I'm also going to do is insert my other knee into it. So I push my bottom knee and pull with the knee. I can free my leg, and then we're in this position here. But I, I chose that side because I wanted to see what's happening here. I'm invading space like this. So now I'm going to spin around so you can see what's happening with the legs, because that's the fifth part. Um, <coughs> so I'm in half guard. Cannot get underneath him, try to flatten him. And as I'm putting my chest on him, I switch. So he's already on the way to being flat, albeit not quite flat. 
right? And once you have a base here, and here, because he's going to rock around trying to upset my, um, my weight distribution. The first thing I want to do is bring this elbow back as much as I can. If you want, you can grab the belt, because it's fine. The second thing I want to do is advance my hips down towards his head, here. Your knee still will be trapped. So if you pull here, that helps. But what really helps is this bottom leg lifts and inserts into his inner thigh here. By pushing my bottom leg, pulling his top leg, we can open up the top guard. Yeah. So actually, yeah. Trying to go here. I'm really trying to flatten him in, switching my base. Okay, move the arm backwards, move my whole body backwards, pull the knee in line, get the upper bottom knee in, push, advance my position and to around the back. Is there a side that was you didn't see it? There's some aspect of it that you need to see again, guys. No? Don't be shy, let me hand up. Let me see it again. Something that wasn't quite fair. You got all that, yeah? I'm mm, skeptical. <laughs> Maybe just the part where your leg goes into. Yeah, into the bottom leg. Yeah, I think that wasn't really clear. What's the best angle to do then? Um, this is actually. Mm. I've done this, and I'm here. I've moved up as much as I can. Grab the inside of his knee line here, so I can pull. This is a pulling mechanism. I need something to push his bottom leg. Because if I just pull, his, all his legs come up with me. See, nothing happens. So put weight on. So what I've done, I've inserted my knee onto his uh, inner thigh here. And as I push my inner knee, the pull here, that opens up. See? This is just, yeah, this is, okay. It's probably the more crude of the various ways to pass the half guard when they're protecting the top arm. But it's a nice way of understanding the your weight distribution compared to his. All right, try that, and I'll come and help you. One, two, three. So we've got past the knee line, and I'm trying to find this. This is not working for me. Now, interestingly, uh, yeah, watching some people, not many, but in trying to free their knee, they were very keen on doing this, and it's successful. You can free your knee, but can anyone suggest what a massive danger to this doing this is for me? Back. Anyone? Sweet. Do you want to take my back from here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. No so that you're good. leaving yourself really exposed to the back. Um, and also, even just being frustrated here and just doing that gives him an entry point here. And we're going to take it from this particular point. Now, I don't know if you were here when I was teaching half guard week, but I showed about I don't know six or seven attacks from here, the sweeps and. Mainly sweeps. Yeah, you can also do submissions from there. All right. If not, then go to Instagram. Join the two thousand <laughs> other people who've watched it and ignored it like everyone else. <laughs> All right. So we're in this position here. If I let him do what he wants, he finds further room to manipulate my hip line and sweeping. I do not want this, obviously. Sure, we can try and fight here, which prevents him performing sweep. But then we're in a sort of a battle of underhook, overhook, all right? And there are techniques you can do from here. It's not really the remit today. I'm still trying to pass his guard. What we're gonna do is we're gonna aim for his head here. But don't knock around here, because he can still do what he wants, right? He can still get underneath and still take the back. I remember the very, very fundamental principle to all these techniques. I wanna get his shoulders flat with that. So what we're here, is I'm over here, and I'm just gonna roll here, so he's flat. And now I've kind of got this position here, all right? Not the best in the world because I'm kind of floating on top of his. I'm going to take this leg and I'm going to step back. All right. He's trying his best to hold the close guard here, and at the same time putting weight on his chest and principally on his face here. All right. I'm going to bring this towards me. We're in this position here. Now my bum is on the ground. I'm stable. All right. Uh, crucially, if he tried to sort of sweep me that direction, if I throw, yeah, I've got this leg. Prevent me here. Yeah. Right? I'm going to pull the leg towards me, and it's the same as the previous position when I'm going up his body line. I'm going to use my other leg, push down, free the leg, and we're in the side position, but on the other side of the previous techniques. Because I've done that back step. I'll show you that to you again. It's quite a fun one to do, so easy to do wrong though. 
This is how you're going to do it. I guarantee it's fine. You're going to go like this. Oh. <laughs> 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 He's got my back. Oh dear. Right? But hey, you know, we learn from our mistakes. You have to do it as control them with pressure, like the previous techniques. So we're here. He goes for an underhook, and we, we have to flatten him. If this hand is stopping him being flattened, we have to take the hand away and we flatten him. I have to control his shoulder line and make sure it's on the ground. Notice how I'm grabbing here, That's, that helps. Now, at this point, I'm unbalanced. He still, if I pause here, he has the strength to either roll me that way, or that way, or that way, or that way, because I'm literally at his mercy. So I have to commit to this. Once I do this, the step back, it's planted on the ground, that's it, it's here. And my weight distribution is on Marcel's left side. All right, so it's very hard for him to throw me that way. He tries to turn that way. And it's very hard to disrupt my balance that way, because I've got this out of balance. Now it's a matter of keeping his back flat. I'm going to use my shoulder line, keep my head down. I'm going to grab his knee on the inside of the knee, bring the knee towards me as I move my bum towards him. It's OK at the stage to put your bum on the ground with extra stability. I'm use my other leg for a little bit of help. And then my head. It's quite a different angle. Yeah. Okay. Can't get this one here. It doesn't like over here. I've got to take this arm. Commit here. Okay. Grab onto the knee line. I'm going to progress in that direction here. Mount rather than a side position. That's a nice one to use if they shoot through the underhook. All right, but don't go flying into it. It's all about keeping his shoulders flat. Did you have a question? Did you put your arm up? No? Well, you were just stretching. You were just. <laughs> <laughs> okay. By the way, just as an aside, as I collapse him, there is. Some guys are quite good. I actually backstep, he just catches my backstepping leg and he's open guard. And yeah, and I get swept over and he's on top. Okay, some people are very attuned to that. So in order to mitigate against that, I'm going to try to see how I get my leg here. So that's just something to bear in mind should you want to use that in this part. <coughs> But apart from that, everyone did it really well. It's probably the best one I've seen from everyone today. Which is annoying, because I wanted you to get good at the first one. <laughs> now, let's look at a scenario where, um, again, I don't necessarily want to go for his head. He's not brave enough, or he's, uh, he's a bit too cautious. He's not going for the unhook, which will allow me to do the head thing. He's just keeping solid there. What we're going to do is we're going to encourage him. Actually, let's just that so we can see it. I basically want a Kimura. I want his arm out here. And no one in their right mind is going to stick their arm out like that. We have to encourage him to do so. And one of the ways is that as he's in this sort of crouched fetal position here, I'm going to go in here, try and feed for what looks like a dart stroke. Going to David Potter's seminar, uh, you'll see what we're trying to do. Natural reaction to this, the one defensively doesn't like this, he gets his arm out. And the moment he gets his arm out here, we switch. Now you can't quite see what I'm doing here, I'm going to spin around so you can see it. It's the same as the penultimate technique, where we switch our hips. All right? This time, I'm not using this leg necessarily, and my leg is still trapped. But I have the Kimura grip. I'm going to flatten his body here. So I'm really going over his body. And in doing so, I'm going to roll over this shoulder here. Here, which might seem like an odd position. And it might, might need some help if you're new to this. But essentially, this is the Kimura trap. A natural reaction for Marcel is he sits up, and when he sits up, we bring our legs in, we convert the Kimura grip into seatbelt grip, take this side, move on to the other side, and then we've got the back control. Among many other things that you can do from the Kimura trap, which is like a whole lesson in itself. But I think the back take is a nice one to do. So uh, I'll show you this side again, and then I'll spin around to you. So we're here, and there's a tiny gap here. People don't necessarily think that's a threat. They are worried about this gap here. But they're not worried about entries in the side. 
You can go in and you're going to force this here. He doesn't like it, so he brings his arm out. That's your trigger. We're going to clasp the arm, switch the hips here, lock on the mirror grip. I'm going to roll my body weight onto his body weight, and in doing so, I'm going to free my leg here. Wait for him to deal as he sits up, I bring my knee in. I'm going to lock this one in here, take my hand over here, and take back control, which is a superior fighting position, plus you get four points. Let's do the technique again, but from a different angle so you can see. <coughs> Or did we just exactly rotate into the yeah. same position we did in the way? No, I think it's fine. This is fine. So I want the Camaro grip, which means his arm has to be exposed. It's not usually going to happen. Right, this side is just so you can see what happens with it. I'm going in this side and I'm trying to make that that's the trivial one. It's never going to be exaggerated that, but for teaching purposes, Marcel is very kindly exposing his own. Going here together. As you see the gap here, we're going to go. Underneath here, switch my hips and lock on the Kimura here. This alone is not necessarily strong, you can't finish the Kimura here, but what we can do from here is control his body by taking it here. All right. Now, keep this one tight. <clears throat> I'm going to take this shoulder, make contact with the ground, and roll over. And generally, you can free your leg. From here, you think, oh, great, I can sit up. As he sits up, it leaves space underneath his back. You slide in, and we take one hook. Notice the grip interchange here, which allows us to get back. There's a lot actually going on here. Don't worry about the back take. I'm more concerned about how you free your leg using the Kimura grip. Let's look at that in isolation. If you aren't worried about the setup, you can just do this. Your partner's on his side, and there's like his arm is in a like chicken wing position. Grab the wrist. Then outside, inside, grab. And then we're going to roll over our shoulder. Preferably not over his face. Just roll it over his chest line. Here. And if you end up here, that's fine. This is actually, believe it or not, a controlling position. Okay, you can do lots of things from here. But that will save that for back attack. Like that. Anybody want to see any of that again? Or do you think you're okay with that description? Yeah? I'll definitely come around and help you. It's a lot technique. I thought I'd show the show you off you one. It's still uh, very useful. I use this a lot. All right. One, two, three. Let's go.